so we've got our cigarettes here and our scotch. I think we should talk about Mad Men. It's about time we did a retrospective on Mad Men. They've just started their fifth season. And for those of you that aren't aware of Mad Men, it's a one hour serialized drama on AMC. So here is a, an issue of Newsweek from about a month and a half ago when Mad Men's fifth season was starting. And they dedicated an entire issue to it where they actually changed the design of the Newsweek magazine to look like 1965. It says, welcome back to 1965. And it's just amazing some of the articles they cover about the 60s. They even have a Lincoln Continental ad in here from 1965. So it's clear that Mad Men has certainly had a big run and an interesting impact on our culture. And I'm here to talk about it because I'm a huge fan. I've never watched the show up mm -hmm. until this season. And prior to that, I didn't watch it because there was other stuff on TV that I was watching. I didn't want to give into the hype. I tuned in and started watching the show, ostensibly because I caught John Hamm somewhere else. He wears and exudes this kind of masculinity. Which that, was appropriate for that time. I mean, right. he's very much the man's man. Here's a guy who's handsome. He's rich, he's successful, and he operates in that white man's world, which means that I am gonna work hard and I'm gonna play hard. We saw several shows that tried to imitate or try to recreate, if you will, that moment in our history. The Playboy Club? We had the Playboy Club, we had Pan Am. Right. Um, all of these shows came and went. What Mad Men does well that these other shows did not do well is it looks at this period with a wry sensibility. Yeah, there's no nostalgia. No, it is Absolutely not look not. back and re fondly reflect on the 60s. No. Instead, what it does is it peels back this kind of veil of, oh, wasn't that a wonderful time? And it really kind of gets in and, and shows some kind of ugliness. You have the end of the Eisenhower era, book ended with essentially Stonewall and the Vietnam War and the counterculture movement and the hippie movement and the Beatles. And just you, if you look at the huge swing in cultural values and mores in just these 10 years, that's a really fascinating template with right. which to have a TV show. And this is where we see the emergence of consumer capitalism kind of take us by storm. This is where you see keeping up with the Joneses right. becoming a major priority in the minds of the American middle class. And it doesn't matter if you're black or Jewish this or gay or woman, as long as the color of your money is green. Right. That's right, that's right. This, Absolutely. And so we're gonna see how this white heterosexual Christian man's world is able to integrate dealing with the changing times. And they will find a way, <laughs> I, am, I am positive I, that, that this crew will find a way to integrate all of that in there to turn a profit. We breed insect repellent tobacco seeds, plant them in the North Carolina sunshine, grow it, cut it, cure it, toast it. What? There you go, there you go. But everybody else's tobacco is toasted. No, everybody else's tobacco is poisonous. Lucky Strikes is toasted. I, I happen to particularly like Elizabeth Moss, who plays Peggy Olson in the show. She started off as Don Draper's assistant, and she's really steadfastly worked her way up. Hard work, but also she got a little help from, from Don, apparently, because right. Don doesn't like Pete. Yeah, the guy who plays Pete Campbell, Vincent Carthizer, he does a great job as sort of the bad guy right. on the show. And Don Draper does not like Pete. Right. And to Pete's consternation, Don is constantly promoting Peggy. And she's certainly deserving of it, but you have to feel but the like office there's... politics are yeah. giving her a boost up. Absolutely. So we like that. And we like her. And she is part of a really compelling and defining moment for me which is she's very smart and very liberal and this is an opportunity for white liberals to walk their talk. And so she takes the one black employee that they have at the right. at the advertising Dawn. agency, Dawn, and uh, Dawn is caught out night or whatever and she needs a place to stay. So right, Peggy she invites she her to come over. back to stay right. in her place. And there's a moment when Peggy says, okay, good night, Dawn, I'm getting ready to go to bed. And Dawn says, okay, because Dawn is sleeping on the sofa. And, and Peggy, the purse. there's a purse sitting in the middle of the yeah. table and Peggy looks at the purse. Dawn looks at the purse, and you can see the wheels turning. Just for a moment, Just Peggy is like, moment. should I take this That's purse right. away or should I leave it there? And she's like, now this is my, here's one of my defining moments. Um, so I, I have to say that I'm kind of, 
I'm kind of wrapping my wrapping my arms around the Peggy Olsen character. My defining moment, it's actually very early on in the show in the first season, and that is when the Kodak guys show up with their slideshow wheel and they don't know how to market it. And what Don does is he takes all of his family photos and puts it into the Kodak wheel and his marriage is starting to crumble and what he does is he talks about what the wheel represents and you see pictures of a happier time in his life, his wedding, the birth of his children, and you're seeing that he's getting misty-eyed and his voice is starting to crack. We know what he's experiencing, but no one else does. It's not called the wheel. It's called the carousel. It let's us travel the way a child travels. Around and around, and back home again. To a place where we know we are loved. And the lights go up and one of his colleagues, who's also having marital problems, literally gets up, bursts into tears, and he runs out of the room crying. And everyone else, including the Kodak executives, are just like blown away. And for me, that's a seminal moment into the show because it shows you how the personal is brought into what they do in their job. Mm -hmm. So just to wrap up, do either of you have any final thoughts on Mad Men? They had this huge hiatus, almost a year and a half between the fourth season, which ended at the end of 2010, and the fifth season that just started now. And I found other shows to get hooked on, but I'm willing to stick with it and see if it picks my interest back up. It's great writing. It looks really pretty, interesting characters. I don't feel compelled to go back and catch up on all of the previous seasons though. Um, unlike the way I did when I had to catch up with Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, I was three episodes into season four and I was like, oh my God, I gotta go back and watch all of the previous episodes from all of the previous seasons. I'm not feeling the rush to do that at this moment in time. Well, I'm hoping the writers and the actors are gonna pick up speed and that the show is gonna regain the momentum that it had at the end of the fourth season, which was really brilliant. Cheers. Cheers. Scotch, scotch, scotch. Scotch, scotch, scotch. scotch. I love scotch. Down with it. Got a light. <sighs>